Okay, good morning. As I uh, mentioned to you after our uh, last meeting, after the previous cabinet, we'll be doing this after uh, cabinet meetings. I have a cabinet meeting afternoon or the following day. Okay? Jambulo Vinaka and a very good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the press corps. I also wish to uh, greet the people who are watching, viewing this, either here at home or abroad. I thank you for being here today to cover this announcement of the key decisions made at the second meeting of cabinet held yesterday, Tuesday, the 31st of January, 2023. As we make this announcement and uh, have this conference, we welcome February, the month when uh, our children will be going to school. We wish them well. Uh, we wish our teachers uh, also a very successful year. In accordance with that uh, commitment I made to make announcements of cabinet decisions after each cabinet meeting, I will now announce the decisions that were reached by your cabinet at our meeting in cabinet uh, cabinet meeting room yesterday. <coughs> the key decisions include the following. One, the establishment of the decision-making machinery of the People's Coalition Government. Two, preparations for the 2023 National Economic Summit. Three, preparatory work for municipal council elections. Four, the review of the National Trade Measurement Act of 1989. And five, cooperation arrangements with New Zealand, Kiribati, and the MSG. I will now elaborate on those decisions. First, the decision-making machinery of government. I presented this as Minister responsible for the civil service and uh, most of the other functions of government. Cabinet review the decision-making machinery of government. While the objective is to improve coordination and facilitate effective implementation of government development agenda, within the framework of the People's Coalition Government. The decision-making machinery is to be adopted by the People's Coalition Government and will put into place checks and balances to ensure inclusiveness, coordination, consistency, transparency, and accountability in our decision-making. Two cabinet subcommittees, the Economic Strategy Committee and the Cabinet Subcommittee on Budget will be established. The Development Subcommittee of Permanent Secretaries will also be reactivated. The Economic Strategy Committee will be chaired by the Prime Minister. Its members include the three Deputy Prime Ministers and the Committee will deliberate on emerging economic policy matters and provide guidance on the formulation of the strategic development plan for the next four years. New investment proposals that uh, substantively require cabinet approval will be deliberated on at the uh, Economic Strategy Committee prior to cabinet. Other cabinet ministers will be co-opted on an each basis, particularly the areas covering their respective portfolios. To better align key decisions that are made at cabinet level, the Prime Minister will also chair the Cabinet Subcommittee on the Budget. The membership of the CSB will include three Deputy Prime Ministers and other cabinet ministers the Chief Executive Officers of the Fiji Revenue and Customs Services and other officials 
will be co-opted on a needs basis. Cabinet also agreed to reactivate the development subcommittee, DSC, a committee of permanent secretaries. The DSC is a forum where the permanent secretaries deliberate on matters concerning government conduct and issues that govern the government machinery. This will allow the permanent secretary to be well informed of new policy initiatives, ease coordination, and provide clarity on the workings of the government machinery. The permanent secretary in the Prime Minister's office will be chairing the DSC. The Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Civil Service will work closely with the office of the Prime Minister on the effective implementation of the decision-making machinery apparatus of the government. 2023 National Economic Summit. You'll remember that this is one of the things we had announced in our lead-up to elections as part of our manifesto of the things we would like to do for PG. Cabinet yesterday agreed that the 2023 National Economic Summit is to be held on the 20th and 21st of April this year. The National Economic Summit will be spearheaded by the Ministry of Finance. The proposed theme for the 2023 NES is reshaping our future through genuine dialogue and collaboration. I'll say that again, reshaping our future through genuine dialogue and collaboration. As Fiji moves into an era of change, engaging with all segments of our society is essential to achieve the People's Coalition Government's overarching objectives of one, inclusive economic security, two, social justice, three, conscientious governance, four, political stability, five, inclusive participation in development, and six, environmental sustainability, drawing on lessons and insights of the past and present to set the economic policy agenda for the future. The National Economic Summit will create a collective national vision with adequate sector policies and an implementation network and framework for the People's Coalition Government Plan to chart a path towards economic recovery. The summit will set the economic policy agenda for accelerated economic growth underpinned by sustainable and inclusive development. It will deliberate on an action, actionable framework for transformative and effective economic governance, build consensus on the imperatives for transforming Fiji's immense human capital into a nationally productive and innovative capacity that creates a secure collective future of prosperity for all in our country. Identify pragmatic initiatives to elicit economic leadership at the sectoral level, adopting a bottom up, not bottom up as in drinking, from the bottom upwards, approach to electoral competitive, uh, competitiveness that contributes to national economic growth and development and articulate the framework within which economic priorities for Fiji are set up over the next four years. Representatives from various sectors of the economy will be invited to attend the summit in the spirit of adopting a consultative and collaborative approach towards addressing sustainable development issues at national regional and global levels. Municipal Council elections, I know a lot of people are interested in this. Cabinet approved the process 
to be adopted to facilitate the election of municipal councillors for towns and city councils. The process includes the establishment of a working group chaired by the Permanent Secretary for Local Government and comprising heads of central agencies, the CEOs of municipal councils and the Fiji Elections Office. The working group will formulate recommendations to the Minister for Housing and Local Government on one municipal boundaries, two the demarcation of wards for each municipality, three the number of councillors for each municipal council and four the necessary amendments to the existing legislation. It will also prepare a detailed action plan for the delivery of a successful municipal, municipal elections, including legislative amendments, policies, guidelines, and standards operating procedures. The working group will also prepare a budget for elections for the 13 municipal councils and the operational costs for municipal councils with elected councillors. The Minister for Local Government will then table the action plan back at Cabinet. The assessment and performance review for municipal council chief executive officers and special administrators will also be undertaken concurrent, concurrently by the Ministry of Local Government. Next, the review of National Trade Measurement Act of 1989. Cabinet approved the review of the National and Trade Measurement Act of 1989. The National and Trade Measurement Act of 1989 is one of the two pieces of legislation that underpin the functions and roles of the Department of National and Trade Measurement and Standards in the Ministry of Trade, Cooperatives, Small and Medium Enterprises. The other legislation is the Trade Standards and Quality Control Act. The Department of National and Trade Measurement and Standards is responsible for the implementation of laws and regulations that protect consumers from unsafe and poor quality products and creates favorable conditions for exchange of goods. It is intended to develop national international standards to raise levels of quality, safety, reliability, efficiency, and interchangeability of products and services. The department also maintains the national systems of units and standards of measurement to ensure fair and just use of units of measurement and measuring instruments. Cabinet noted that the 1998, the 1989 National Trade Measurement Act is archaic, archaic, outdated, and prescriptive, and agree that it be reviewed and updated to make it relevant and easy to use. The Department of National and Trade Measurement and Standards will be working closely with the Solicitor General's Office on the review process and drafting of the amended bill, amendment bill, and the bill will undergo consultations and will be brought back to Cabinet before it is tabled in Parliament. Next is the agreement between the Government of the Republic of Fiji and the Government of New Zealand on defence cooperation and the status of visiting forces. Cabinet approved an agreement with the Government of New Zealand on cooperation in the field of defence and status of visiting forces. Fiji and New Zealand share a history of strong ties encompassing heritage, culture, sports, business and education. It reflects a common Pacific identity and strong people-to-people -people links. The agreement approved by Cabinet affirms the strong bilateral defense relationship between the two countries. The agreement establishes a framework which reaffirms the mutual benefits 
of interoperability between the RFMF and the New Zealand Defence Forces. It also recognizes our shared interest in enhancing security cooperation to meet common challenges and, and maintain a secure, sovereign and resilient nation and region. The agreement will allow the defense personnel of our two countries to undertake exchanges, exchanges also in deployments and exercises in each other's jurisdiction. Fiji will benefit, as we have in the past, immensely from these military exchanges in terms of exposure of Fijian troops to New Zealand's military training methods and standards, interoperability and understanding of New Zealand military doctrine, obtaining funding support, facilitating the engagement of experts and, and, and acquiring skills, and exposure to new military equipment and hardware that are not otherwise available. Next is the Memorandum of Understanding on Sports Cooperation between the members of the Melanesian Spearhead Group, MSG. Cabinet approved a Memorandum of Understanding on Sports Cooperation between the members of the Melanesian Spearhead Group. The MOU will be signed by all MSG members. The aim of the MOU is to strengthen the existing cooperation within the MSG in the sports sector and provide a framework for sports policy, sports policy development, technical and financial support among the members. The MOU will encourage the development of sports exchange programs for capacity building and human resource development and support the financial commitments of hosting sanctioned MSG tournaments. Additionally, the, MS, the MOU will provide a framework for collaboration within which detailed proposals for programs of cooperation between the MSG members. Next is the strengthening of bilateral relations with Kiribati on, uh, in the fishing sector. Cabinet agreed that potential areas of supportive collaboration be explored between the Kiribati Fisheries Ministry and Fiji Fisheries Ministry. As a chain of 33 low-lying atoll islands, Kiribati is highly vulnerable to natural disasters and the impact of climate change and other natural man-made factors of men caused factors. Kiribati is also resource rich, especially in fisheries. Fiji will pursue possible collaboration with the Kiribati Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources in these areas. The promotion of fishing branches between the two countries, post-harvest post fish processing, development and marketing, including training, joint research and development, joint fisheries conservation and management, and fisheries infrastructure development, just to name, to name a few. The potential areas of cooperation will be formalized via an MOU between our Fiji Ministry of Fisheries and the Kiribati Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources. Once the two agencies confirmed the terms of the MOU, it will then be tabled in Cabinet for a decision. Now I come to the state visit to Kiribati two, two weeks ago. I'm pleased to announce that the government of Kiribati has written to me as chairman of the Pacific Island Forum, express, expressing their willingness to rejoin the Forum family. We will facilitate the process in consultation with all forum leaders. In addition, we agreed to strengthen our bilateral relations and agreed to revisit the following outstanding bilateral issues. One, the Air Services Agreement. Two, development of Kiribati-owned land in Natovatu in the Konrave, Vonolevu, to be a source that will ensure food security 
for the people on Kiribati. Three, development of Fijian legal professionals or deployment of Fijian legal professionals to the Kiribati Attorney General's Office. Four, training opportunities in Fiji for specifically, uh, specifically for health and education professionals from Kiribati. And five, strengthening the networks with the e-Kiribati students who pursue secondary school education in Fiji. And lastly, the re-establishment or the encouraging Fiji to re-establish the island, the Rambi Island Council of Leaders. You know that the chair of that Council of Leaders is also a nominated member of the Kiribati Parliament. The team of officials for both governments are working together in developing the necessary acceptable arrangements in addressing the issues of common interest. I'd also like to uh, acknowledge with uh, sincere appreciation Australian government support and assistance in the transportation of the team of government officials uh, from Fiji to visit Kiribati through making available for us one of their Royal Air Force uh, Royal Air Force uh, VIP flight aircraft. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. That is a summary of the cabinet decisions made at our second meeting yesterday, the 31st of January 2023. You may uh, be receiving copies of these statements which you can uh, have for your medium. <laughs>